In the UK, we have a record number of church ministers leaving the church and going back to secular work. Um, can you give some encouragement to church ministers in the UK, please? One, you're not alone. Same thing is true in Canada, the United States, Mexico, China. I would say, ask yourself why. Because usually there's something that's not right in their life or right in the way they've been ever preaching or leading the church that will cause that. Uh, so why am I feeling this way? What is causing this? What can I do about it? Second, ask yourself, has God called you to preach the gospel? Has God called you to be a pastor? I know God has called me to do what I do. Hmm. And um, so you need to make sure of your calling. And then you're thinking about leaving the ministry. Share that with several men or women you really trust that you know love you. And where this is good if you're in a small group, and a lot of them are probably leaving the ministry because they're not in a small group. They're not held accountable. Um, and share it with others and get their insight to it. Uh, I've been in the ministry now 50, gosh, almost 60 years. Um, and I think what has helped me so much, one, I know God called me. I'm dogmatic on that, hmm. that God called me. And uh, I believe the call to leave has to be louder than the call to come. And I haven't even heard a whisper in 60 years. Second, I have very deep convictions because of the way I came to Christ, I have deep conviction about the truth of the resurrection, the scriptures, the deity of Christ, of truth itself, of lostness, of heaven, of hell. And today, in today's world, if you don't have deep convictions that drive you, you're going to fluctuate. You, you, you're going you're gonna to face problems. And then another reason so many leave is because of their marriage. They don't tell you that. But I would say to men, go to marriage counseling. You and your wife together. Uh, I would say to any pastor, don't just get marriage counseling. Go to marriage counseling. You don't have to go to marriage counseling because you're weak. It's better to go to marriage counseling because you're strong and want to become stronger. Mm. And uh, and I think once every year, 18 months, two years at the most, going to a marriage seminar would be so healthy for pastors to go there for their and go with his wife or her husband, whatever, and uh, learn together. Yeah. And then probably the third biggest reason people leave, or even the second, is finances. Hmm. Um, and there I would say, talk to the board. Talk to the board of the church. Talk to the organization you're working with. Like if it was me, I would talk to Campus Crusade for Christ. Um, if finances is a real problem, uh, share that with them. Uh, number of years ago, I've been on crew staff 57 years, uh, and I was going bankrupt. And I didn't know what to do. And I shared it with a board member, a businessman who was on the board of crew. I said, you know, I'm responsible. I'm on a tight budget, everything, but I'm just not making it. 
I wasn't asking for help or anything. I was just getting it off my chest. Well, he went to the board and they hired an organization to examine my lifestyle. I mean, for six months, they took every check I ever wrote, everything, analyzed it and all. And then crew said to me, you're a totally different bird than the other staff members. And then they realized so many of my expenses that I have are equal to the most staff members' income because of what I do, uh, and which I couldn't reimburse. And so they said, you let us know what you think you ought to receive. And then they asked this committee to figure out how much should we be paying Josh? Let him raise. <laughs> and wow, I shared to them and uh, what the board shared was probably double. And they upped my income by about 70%. Right. And uh, because they said, most staff we can treat the same, but there's a few staff that stand out and have expenses other staffs don't have, uh, like I do, with all the hotels, travel, food, everything. And there's certain things you can't reimburse because of federal regulations. It comes out of your salary. And so I would say to a pastor, go to the, bo go to the board. Take your budget with you. And I think if the board is not willing to consider, not that they do it, but willing to really seriously consider it, <laughs> I'd walk away from that church so fast your head would spin. Whether I was planning to leave the ministry or not, I'd walk away from that church mighty fast. They're not at least willing to consider it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I heard for a lot of pastors and missionaries, uh, because with what they're paid and they're, they're working in an environment where if you sacrifice your family, you're spiritual. Well, that's stupid. If you sacrifice your family, you're not spiritual. You're an idiot. Uh, unless, you have their unless you have their permission. God is a God of all wealth. And... Uh, so I'd say a number of missionary pastors, go to your board. Now, if you're in it for the money, go get a secular job. Yeah. I could make so much more money. <laughs> I've been offered a lot of money for working for organizations as a speaker and a motivator and all. But uh, my calling is to the gospel, not to making money. But I am very secure financially. I don't have to worry about it. I can focus on what I'm doing at all. And I wish everyone had that privilege. And Campus Crusade has given me that privilege. Yeah. Yeah, so at that, yeah I was going to say, at that time, were you thinking then of leaving the ministry when you were struggling financially? No. No. I don't think I've ever thought about leaving the ministry because I've never had a call to leave that even compares to the call to come. Yeah. Uh, I've been frustrated, discouraged, but I've never come to the point where I'm going to leave. You know, it would take a lot for me to do that. I mean, I might leave Crusade, but go with the church or go with the organization, but I doubt I'll ever leave Crusade. I don't think there's any organization that treats its staff better than Campus Crusade for Christ does. Okay. I really are. I mean, I'm the board, our leadership, all. And going all the way back, starting with Bill Bright. Boy, when Bill heard any staff was struggling, whatever, he would personally step right in. Yeah. What was Bill like as a character? He... He was very focused, very focused on Christ and the fulfillment of the Great Commission. 
Hmm. Uh, but for me, he was a fun man to be around. I probably knew Bill Bright. Maybe four or five other people knew him better than I did. But uh, I deeply respected him. I respected how he lived. I respected his marriage, his children. Um, I respected his integrity. And you got what you saw, and you saw what you got. Yeah. He had a great impact on my life. And I think for many of us, he was more like a father figure than an authoritative figure. Yeah. Mm. He was a good man. Good man. But you know what? There's a lot of good men and women out there. There really are in the ministry. Mm. Uh, I'm proud to work with the people that I work with in Campus Crusade. I think I work with some of the greatest people to walk the face of the earth, mm. both nationally and globally in other countries. Uh, I'm humbled to be with crew. Yeah. And I'm humbled that they invite me in to speak. They buy my books, and I don't get anything in my books. I've never received one dollar from my books. Oh, wow. Uh, they're all given away. But, uh, yeah, that's my journey with the ministry. 